Hey everybody, welcome to The Jab. I'm your host, The Brian, and this is my co-host, Mr. J. Hey, yo. We, uh, we're here today to talk about a couple topics that might interest you. Uh, the Jab, where we talk about everything from society to politics to sports and pop culture and everything in between. Two musings of two middle-aged men on their way out, it seems, pretty soon here. Because every day yeah, we... Right. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not referencing the fact we're getting older. We're just getting old. Referencing more the fact that TikTok, TikTok may be going the wayside for us. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, real quick. Our sponsor has been good hot sauces. Uh, we're proud to say that should be in five stores in the next three months. Yes, in the great state of Maine. And still so, available if you're ever internationally up online. Um, you can order anytime from www.flippinggoodsauces.com. Um, we ship internationally. Um, our furthest shipment so far has been Hawaii. Uh, so almost halfway across the world for us. At least a quarter of the way. Um, Not bad. And, and uh, yeah, so let's get on with the show. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. J. First topic. All right, all right, all right. Hello, folks, and welcome. Our first topic today will be the Pittsburgh police is set to shut down their offices between the hours of 3 a.m. and 7 a.m. In an attempt to bring their 911 call volume down from 200,000 to 50,000, Pittsburgh Police Chief Larry Scroto, we're just going to call him Larry Scrotum, has implanted, <laughs> implemented a new response policy. And as of, uh, was it March 11th, which was uh, what, Monday? Yeah, as of Monday, the Bureau will only respond to in-progress emergencies between the hours of 3 a.m. and 7 any petty crimes such as theft or harassment will be dealt with by the call center or online reporting and any parking issues will be handled by the pittsburgh parking authority this new policy is in response to the seriously understaffed police department according to the fop union president bob Schwarzwelder. in a statement good old bob said that the FOP will be watching carefully for any contract violations that develop, especially when non-emergency events come up, such as St. Patrick's Day, parades, large concerts, July 4th, anything like that. In short, the FOP believes that the police department is seriously overcommitted and under-resourced. So it sounds like to me is the police don't want to do their job in Pittsburgh anymore, and they just want to outsource it, and they want their time off. Yeah, Not I mean, people want to work in the in the police to police field, and when well, if you look at the way the world is right now and the way that they look at police, can you blame them? Right. Ah, <sighs> two hundred thousand nine one one calls. What a year? Two, yeah, no, no, no. That's almost like I, I think they said that's almost uh, that's almost weekly. So, I mean, isn't that crazy, though? I mean, you just got to think about that. Oh, yeah. But that's uh, 20, uh, 29,000 a day. But a lot of them say, a lot of them apparently, the calls are like petty crimes. Like, hey, though, this person won't get off my, uh, this person won't get off my lawn. Or, hey, there's an abandoned bike sitting here. Or, hey, there's this dog running around without any light, without any leash. It's a little... Right, right, right. Bad. Right, and, and not serious problems. That no, it's nothing real. It's nothing serious. If it was serious crimes, I don't think they'd be shutting down their place. I think they'd be pushing for more help. Right, right. And that's what I was wondering. I'm thinking about something like somebody getting murdered, and they're like, oh, look at the time. I can't call. I mean, you know, that that's I'm getting yeah, I mean, murdered. It's 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 two fifty nine and I can't call nine one one. Yeah. You know, so I mean I mean I'm sure there's a lot more to this than the story has broken about it because it's gotta be like it just seems insane. I mean it does without... and, and but it seems like also too it looks like it's more of a union issue. Yeah. The cops unionize and it's a union issue. And if we're gonna look at if we're going to look at union issues, 
to bet like 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 better work environment you're a police officer say the same thing to these nurses that want to jump out you know it right it's the profession what this is the profession that you signed up for this is the profession you went to school for this is the profession that you paid for so if you're not if you're not going to do if you're not going to there are hazards to every job if you're not going to accept the hazard then why do the job right no I, and i get that but i also wonder i mean it's kind of like the whole uh, pharmacist thing at what point does what you sign up for and what you're experiencing bridge to uh, you know it's a bridge too far because i mean and i and i know that's a lot of issue on i mean i see both sides of the police issue and one of the biggest issues is the is that they're not they're not equipped to handle mental health. I mean, they're, they're not, yeah. counselor. you know, we know that. And, and a lot of people are social work and all that. And, and a lot of people have brought that up saying that like, you know, a lot of these police get a bad rap and there are bad ones, but you know, there's a police that get this bad rap that may be doing like a 14, 16 hour shift and they've dealt with marital issues for 12 hours of it. And, you know, children and what, and all, whatever, and a spousal abuse, whatever, all these things, and they're not equipped for it at all. You have an officer who's maybe 23 years old, never been in a serious relationship, has no psychological training, no social, you know, that none of this stuff, no counseling right. capabilities, minus the negotiation, you know, basic talk down and stuff. And then you're throwing them bet left and right with this stuff and, and they're just getting frustrated with it. And it's like, and that's not what they're signed up for, obviously. Um, and then on the other side of it, um, you have the, you know, you have the fact that, you know, scam callers. Um, oh, yeah. I, I don't know if you can hear the phone calling in the back. Yeah, I heard it. I heard it. You're good. You're good. All day. All day. Every day. Um, they yeah, want so, your money. No, they want me to sign up for Medicare Part D. They want your I, money. <laughs> I, I, I'm 42. I, I don't know how I got on this Medicare call list. I get 20 calls a day from, and it's always somebody, it's always, as, like, you know, as soon as I hit the, 40, as soon as I hit 40, I'm like, and it says right on the thing, it's crazy. It's a, it's a local number and it'll say like Margaret Jameson or something. It'll be some person's name. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know who this is, you know, and, and I, I, now I know what they are because of what they are. Yeah. It's, it's somebody who died and it's, I've looked up the names every time it's a dead person. They steal the dead person's phone number. As soon as it goes on the registry, you pop, you answer it. It's dead air. And all of a sudden it's, Hi, yep. my name is Susie. I am calling from Medicare Advantage. How are you? And it's an AI bot. Yeah. And you can say whatever you want to them. They will go through. Or half of them are dead air anyways. I hang up after 10 seconds. I wasn't even the point. Waste my time. And then, you know, you actually get through these guys. And then it's always some guy that's blatantly and in no way just saying about a race or anything, but blatantly yeah, yeah. Mid Middle Eastern or, or you know. Yeah, but it's, it's outsourced. It's outsourced. Right, somewhere from that area. And they always and they my my name is Joseph Smith and it's like um, Really? <laughs> yeah, or or my, <laughs> my, my my name is Mike Andrews. No, I don't think it is, dude. So I mean just say your real name right off. You're not going to and how are you and all this? And they always ask you, do you have Medicare Part A and Part B? I go, No. They go, Oh, that's okay. Well, right there, I'm not the right age. Uh, I'm looking yeah. at Medicare at Part D you know, whatever, or, or are you looking for Medicare Part D? How old, old are you? I don't care what age you say. I mean, if they say anything under 62 or 63, they go yeah. click. I, I'm yeah, like, exactly. And, and, and I don't understand why I, I just, I don't get it now. And I understand why I'm getting the phone calls and why I'm getting the spam emails is because I have an open case with social security right now. Well, that's the thing. Okay, so even if I say to them forty-two, they don't ask if I'm on Medicare for disability or any of that stuff. Oh yeah, they don't know. They don't know. They hang up because they can't sell their service to anyone under 60, 60 whatever, because of the oh, outside yeah. Medicare D pro programs. So I'm but like, like, what? Why? But like, I get, but I get like, I get all the the usual AARP stuff. And 
certain medications have been coming through. Like I am so yeah. sick and tired of seeing advertisements for Blue Chew. If I see another advertisement for Blue Chew one more time, I am contacting the damn company and I'm like, look, I'm not a 20 something TikTok influencer who wants to use your freaking product. Leave me alone. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I get like 12 ads a day for generic Cialis and Viagra and all yeah. that stuff. And I'm like, if I wanted that, I would have gone to my doctor, gotten it, and filled the prescription for three bucks because that's all it costs, like for the generics at right. the place I work at. Like, I don't want, I don't, you know, I'm like, I don't know who you're selling to. It's weird because the people I feel I would need that would not go. I don't know. I, I just don't know who their market their market is. The average person that may need that probably is not on that platform. The few that are on there probably talk to their doctor are not going to attempt to go after it. Right. You know? Right. Exactly. I, I don't. I don't know. But yeah. yeah, some of that is just so crazy. It makes no sense. But yeah, the Medicare thing it just frustrates me. I seriously the other day. Oh my god, this I totally different AI bot. Really good one. Actually, I had me fooled for the first two questions. Actually, it was very oh, realistic. <laughs> had, had all the people on the phones in the background, like sounded like the call center. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, oh my god, you know. And her name was Ashley or whatever. And um, you know, this, oh, god. Girl, this girl. And all of a sudden, the guy picks up and it's blatantly, you know, Ahmed from wherever. Like, I mean, <laughs> and, and 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 he says his name. He said, um, he said his name was uh, um, uh, Douglas Anderson. I'm like, that's not even a white nice. guy. Like, no, nobody's named Douglas Anderson. I mean, yeah, right, somebody else. Right. But I mean, they go by Doug. I, I, I'm i like, okay, whatever. So, we'll go know, by Doug. And, and I go, Douglas, I go, wait a minute. Where'd Ashley go? And he goes, goes me. I go, Ashley was just going to show me her tits. Where is she? <laughs> he, he starts busting up laughing for about 10 seconds and says, okay, and hangs up. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, well, at least I made his day. I'm like, yeah, well, right, right. I'm like, you know, they know the scammers. All right. Well, then now speaking of scams, let's move on to our next piece. Jake uh, Paul versus Mike Tyson. No, no, real scam. Membership to the jab. Okay, twenty nine ninety nine a month. Do it. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Buy a subscription to the jab, twenty nine ninety nine a month. Okay. Hit that subscription button and let's go. Now, okay. Now, now, giving credit where it's due to Bobby for bringing that up because I likely <laughs> heard about it, but really the whole the whole uh, Mike Tyson thing, all my media feed. Yes, I know it's been all over my media feed. That's the other reason why I wanted to talk about it. Okay, so here's the thing, I've heard so much fucking. I've heard so much about this damn fight. It's not even funny. It's getting to the point where I actually want to pay for it because I lost my Netflix subscription. I actually want to pay for it just so I can see this 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 circus clown act. Okay. I know. I don't know. Okay. I've heard that there are that Jake Paul has special rules when it comes to yeah. fight, fighting four, Mike Tyson. Four rules. Yeah. Four rules. Okay. If you believe anything from TikTok. Besides you the, jab, the, jab, the jab, besides the jab, except for the jab, yes. Jake Paul has set up four absolutely fucking ridiculous rules for this bout. The first one: Jake Paul is allowed to wear headgear, but the near sixty-year-old boxer Mike Tyson is not. Now, there's huge speculation over this, all over it. Okay all over different social media platforms, from Reddit to YouTube, about what about this headgear rule. Okay, some say especially like Daily Mail Online and Reddit, mostly have said that there will be no headgear involved, which is what usually happens in Jake Paul's bouts and Mike Tyson's bouts. In most bouts, there's no headgear involved. Yeah, it's not a low-level UFC or something. It's so kickboxing. It's, it's others. Boxing. Yeah, but others like YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, and such want you to believe anything from Jake Paul is allowed to wear headgear to... Uh, Jake Paul's headgear will be thicker than Ty and Tyson's won't be, and Mike Tyson's can't wear headgear at all. Yeah. And uh, but honestly, in any fight, we all know Mike Tyson won't wear headgear, and God forbid Jake Paul screw up his hair in a, in, in, in this whole and, and, social media blowout. And I don't see Jake Paul wearing headgear because 
I mean, no. he's gotten some good hits. He can take a hit. Yeah, I'm not he can take a hit. Him, but he he can he takes hits. He's not a whim. No. So I mean, honestly, that rules the month. No, there's no way. There's no way that's happening. It would be a joke fight at that point. I, yeah. I mean, unless you had a hundred and twenty pound going against a two hundred pound. Well, I already, I already think this damn thing's a joke, but. Yeah, I I don't know. So okay, okay. go ahead, go ahead. Let's go. Through, let's finish going through the rules. Yeah. Rule number two: Tyson has to reach Jake Paul's weight as of now. But by the way, in okay. Right, right. Uh, but Jake Paul, Jake does Paul not can need bulk up all he wants. Yeah, I've heard that rule. And if you listen to, if you according to the Mirror UK, the bout is an officially sanctioned fight, which means they both have to reach a certain weight. They can't. One can't be a featherweight and one be a heavyweight. That's it's an actually sanctioned fight, so they have to be at a certain weight right, if this is going to happen. The, the, Question is, is is Jake is Mike weighs more than Jake? Yeah, Mike's a heavyweight. Right. So if Jake is already over a certain threshold and and has waived his right away for a mixed weight match, they may have to register their weights, but they don't. He doesn't have to hit a weight to actually fight. He just has to register right. the weight. So I mean, he'll do a weigh in, but he's not going to have a he's not going to have a required entry weigh in. That's, yeah, that's no, 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 I think that, it's that, just, that, that I can see. That I think it's just going to be like you've got to be within a certain weight limit for this fight, right? And they're oh, both going to be in those weight limits. Yeah, Jake they're going to be within the weight pretty limit, steady. Weight. What can Jake do? Put on five pounds of muscle in that time? I mean, you can't move much weight on somebody built like that. Hold on, this is where the third rule comes in. Is it the uh, chem chemical situation? Yeah. Tyson yeah. is prohibited from using any performance enhancement drug, but Jake Paul is allowed to. Eh, wrong. Wrong. Yeah, I don't, but I don't think Jake would. Um, I could see Jake already pre-steroiding prior, and what he will do is get off of his cycle. He's probably going to plan with his date that his, you know, trend cycle, all that will stop ahead of time. And right. Yeah, you know what? He might be on some kind of, like, you know, amphetamines. I mean, he might be on something to lift him a bit. But I, it's not like he's going to be on PCP. Well, no, 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 no. They're talking about performance enhancement drugs. Well, that is a performance enhancement drug. I mean. Well, no, that's not. That's not. No. <laughs> <laughs> you can rip a car door off on that. So. Yeah. Okay. But the thing is, though, is the whole idea of doping right, was right, right. banned by the International Athletics Federation in 1928. And they started their testings in 1960. And right, they've been right, pushing right. it hard for years. There's no way he's going to get away with being on anything for this fight. Right, but what, this is the thing is he can be on something for up to 18 weeks prior and then stop. Oh, yeah. At the end of, well, end the of fight's the what? The fight's at the end of this month? Mm, end of next month, I think, or something. No, it's a little ways away. Or is it in June? I don't no, remember. I think it's in June. So he I could think stop it's in June. In, right, so that's the thing is if you're doing – I don't know how familiar you are with steroid cycles or whatnot. but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you basically, you do your stacks and you go on for a period of time, you come off the right way to do them, the, the way that like um, baseball players do it. I mean, so, like I was on prednisone, but that's not the, yeah, that's not, that's not what you were talking about here. No, no, no. You're talking about anabolics. So you're talking yeah. about trend and things like that. And what you do is you, you build your stacks and one will create bulk. One will create um, muscle growth, you know, these things and you'll get off because you stay on and you do the professional wrestler thing. Yeah, you blow up, but you actually can't move your arms. You have roid rage, and you have a heart attack. Whereas if a doctor is sanctioning your steroid use in nice increments and done right with the right nutrition and workout regimens, they work really well. You can actually get really built off of them and not have all the side of bad side effects. Because the second the side effects start kicking in, like the testicle issue and hormones and all that, yeah. you're off of them. So it's a way that they would – it's the same system that you do steroids that have somebody like an MS or somebody has like a degenerative condition that needs muscle build and weight right, gain. Right, So, So if they're doing that, they can do that. All they want is professional boxers, and they probably do because as soon as they get to a time window, they stop, and it's out of their system before a test comes out. And they have lost some of their ability, but the point is, is you climb 20 feet on the ladder, you come back down 10 feet, you're still 10 feet up. 
Yeah, yeah. So that's what they're doing. I, I would not doubt because pretty much every professional athlete, most Olympic people even do it. Olympics are the most tested and there's still a time window, which is how a lot of them get around it, that they, you know, they use small short spurs of steroids because it's the only way to get where you are. This You can't get like these pro- and these professional baseball players. You can't get those arms. You can't. Oh, yeah. get, no, no. You can't break a bat over your leg from working. Out not unless you. not unless you're like, yeah, not unless you're like. Doing this all somebody. day long, getting gains all day long. No, all right. so, so fourth but, rule. So the fourth rule, and this is the one that makes me laugh. It makes me laugh so hard. Logan Paul will be allowed to jump in, making it a two-one-three bout at any time. Yeah, this is not a WWE fight. <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. No, if that would if that were to happen, if that were to happen. This whole entire thing would be a joke. Oh, okay. And I don't, now, and I don't now, think Mike Tyson would professionally throw himself under the bridge for under the no, yeah. no. no. If it was for if it was for charity and it was known as that it was yeah. a joke thing, he would be all for it. It'd be funny. Now, here's the funny thing. Imagine this has happened, right? And all of a sudden, Mike just two combos and knockout, knockout, ball. <laughs> Oh yeah, well that'd be hilarious, honestly. That, I would be like, all right. Here's I mean, I would, I would, I mean. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. But uh, the, here's here's the thing though is, I don't think, well, I don't think he would want to fight Mike Tyson. Jake is nuts to begin with. With it. Yeah. Well. Well. See, here's the thing. Logan, He's not as much I, of an idiot. I can see. I can see Logan being in the corner, being in his corner. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll be his. Yeah, his. But support, like. Yeah, but I don't see I don't see him actually getting into it because from no. everything that I've read about this fight, this is a 100% we're doing this match. This isn't a publicity stunt. This isn't yeah. a social media gag. Even though everything that you've seen on if you everything you've seen on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram, uh, you know, the whole Mike walk around with the shirt, sign the contract, sign the contract. Right, that's right, right. A, but but that, that's, that's a that's stage boxing. thing to promote the fight. Think about this. Uh, what's his name? Don, um, uh, the guy who used to promote Mike Tyson. Don King. Don King, okay. He, they did the theatrics. That's what boxers yeah. did. I was, they always come up I and mean, face each other, and they always sit there and growl at each other and stuff on, at the press conference. They're not getting into yeah. a fight. Afterwards, they're having a beer together talking half the time. They yeah. don't even, they're fine. When, it's all promotion. When like the whole thing that happened with uh, when Mike was on uh, the WWF when he was part of Degeneration X, it was a promotion. Right, right. You know when yeah. when he when he when he fought that little girl, it was a promotion. You know, yeah. um, which I honestly, if you ever have, if you ever find that video, I think that whole video was adorable. Like, I mean, the way he knocked her out though, that was too much. That was. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway but yeah no, i see this fight i honestly i see this fight being you know a legit exhibition sanction match i i don't see this being yeah i i do too I, the only thing i could see is i would almost say the only caveat here i mean the way in issue because that might just be there might be special rules because it's yeah. the same thing when um uh, was it Thor and Eddie Fox? I mean, there, there was their own rules. That wasn't a sanctioned fight under that same guidelines. That was independent yeah. out, of, out of Dubai or wherever it was, you know. So that was its own thing. But still, you know, they, they, they make some special rules to some of these fights because those two guys are still far off. You can't do it. And no. um, or there was even um, there was some technical under uh, what was his name? Uh, was it McGregor and uh, Pacquiao? Was that what it was? See, I didn't follow that fight, so I wouldn't be able to tell so, you. This, whenever, is honestly, whenever, this is honestly the first boxing match that I honestly followed in like a really long time. <laughs> so, so, so when you have somebody crossed over from UFC or something like that, or yeah. kickboxing or whatever, sometimes what ends up happening is sometimes um, I know there's little technicality things that they make it into with like, all right, we're going to limit to you know this and that, whatever these kind of things. So, um, yeah. you know, I don't know. I wouldn't doubt because of the novice level of jake paul and you know tyson and a lot of them are like you know tyson's gonna need special treatment because he's still old and it's like we've been watching the training videos no he doesn't. no tyson's still got it yeah tyson's i, I got wouldn't 
I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go by that at all because I mean that that's just it, you this never. Is, know. It's, it, it's honestly, it's going to go either. It's going to be a quick three bouts, or they're going to go all the way. I think they're going to go a while. Because what I think is going to happen is Tyson's not going to speak through the beginning because right. he's going to want the publicity. He's going to want the long fight. He's not going to just – he's not going to gas out in the beginning. Oh, yeah. Or, no. You know, no. He's going to sit there and try to wear, you know, Paul down a bit. And then mm-hmm. what's going to end up happening is then when Jake thinks he's going to snap on him around six or seven, Tyson's going to just sit back and let him burn out for a minute take a few hits maybe, get the technical points up. It's going to go a little bit in his favor. And then Tyson's going to walk up in probably eight and just drop him. He's going yeah. to put. He's going to say, I'm near the end. I'm putting everything forward. I don't care if I have a heart attack. And he's going to, be, <laughs> and he's going to spin his head around and knock him down or yeah. pum- pummel him to the point where he's going to get a, a, a technical or he's going to knock the points past the scale that Jake, he can just dance around Jake for the end of it or, or block yeah. him and he, he can't come back on points. And, I mean, if they get the 10, I'd be surprised. If they do, it's going to be three or four points up on Mike. I thought I read somewhere it was only a nine. Yeah, and, and if that's the case. So if they're getting to nine, then it's going to be three or four points Tyson if yeah. they get to the end. He's going to be up on his If Tyson point. doesn't knock him out. No, because, I mean, it's either that or you're going to have a disappointing fight, which is going to be nobody wanting to invest and sponsor in the future. Right. If it's a one or two round knockout because it's going to be like an epic reel for about a month. It's going to be on the news. Jake Paul is going to have all this credibility issue. He's going to have this whole comeback one of thing. But nobody's going to want to sponsor any of these big guys going against people like that anymore because they're like, it's not entertaining. You know it was going to happen. Well, it's and the other thing is, though, too, is and I kind of I had this kind of sitting in the back of my mind. You, everybody in the world saw Mike Tyson's reaction to Mayweather's fight. He was sitting there in the front row. Everybody saw Mike Tyson's reaction. And what if, what if this is a setup where Mike Tyson shows that he can be in the ring again and Mike Tyson calls out Mayweather? And then- <laughs> That's another fight I would pay to see. I would pay to see Mike Tyson beat the shit out of Mayweather. For another time, though. For another time. <laughs> so, no, and, and, and that, you know, it's going to be, no, no, that is going to be Jake Paul, Logan Paul, Mayweather, Tyson, and George Foreman. And, and they're all going to get in the ring together and just pummel on each other. It's going to be, and it's going to be scared. elimination, it's going to be elimination chamber boxing style. No, yeah, it's going to be, uh, what is this, what is it at the end of the uh, WrestleMania there where they, like, it's a, uh, the free for all, like a cage setup, you know, where everybody just keeps going into the last one standing. It's called the oh well, it was it used to be the elimination chamber, um, which they just had that they just had that in Perth, Australia. Um, yeah, but they, but they used to call, back when it was Hogan and stuff. Oh, I was it No Way Out. Oh uh, yeah, so when they were know, doing yeah, No Way Out during the no, yeah no, during, yeah no bars or the yeah, Royal Rumble. Rumble. Or Royal the Royal Rumble. Rumble. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. You're gonna have, you're gonna have the Royal Punch Out. It's gonna be it's gonna like it, I saw a joke about that. I saw a joke about that on on uh, Instagram a reel about um, the yeah. characters from uh, Mike Tyson's Punch Out, and that's gonna be basically. Yeah, yeah, there we are, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a Royal Box Out. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Every one of them has to wear a blindfold, and they get one 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 hand tied behind their back, and they just all punch until one's gone. A uh, one stays. Okay, now that I, right I would, I would watch that. That's that. a publicity stunt. That's a publicity. I would watch that though. That'd be funny. Well, let's go on to our next topic. Sorry. Uh, so if you haven't heard about it, you're deaf. You're blind. You're what? dumb. Huh? If you haven't heard about it, Congress wants to ban, or the U.S. government wants to ban TikTok. Well, here's some news for you folks. In a vote of 352 to 65, a bill that would ban TikTok from the U.S. sailed through the House on its way to the Senate, where it is expected to pass right on to the president's desk. 
That is the idea because the president has said as soon as it hits his desk, he'll sign it into law. Now, this ban comes from fear. This whole thing has been is, is, is a whole fear mongering thing because they are afraid that China, that the China owned company ByteDance, which was later debunked. Somebody had said, I had heard somebody say on, 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 on TikTok here that ByteDance actually isn't owned by China. It's owned by, a, it's in a United States owned company. Now, that's what I heard. Yeah, but I couldn't, get, I couldn't find any concrete information on it at such short time as I heard about this morning. Um, but um, ByteDance said that if this ban goes through, like they came out in a con in a, in a thing and said this goes through, um, th that the United States government will be hurting over 170 million United States users. Yeah. Um, and on Tuesday, before the bill, yes, on this past Tuesday, uh, some of those users who actually run their businesses off of the TikTok shop and off of TikTok were actually on, were, yeah, were actually on the steps of the Capitol trying to protest it and trying to raise awareness. And even even TikTok came out and put a thing out saying, you know, get a hold of your congressman. Um, and tell them, or your or representative, and tell them to vote no on the ban so that you can still use TikTok in the United States. Now, apparently, that, obviously that didn't work. Nobody listened. It sailed right through anyway. Now, the funny thing is about this, though, is a lot of, a, a lot of uh, representatives who, who, who said yes on this ban also have con our content creators on TikTok. Yeah, uh, okay. President so, has a TikTok account. Oh, yeah, yeah. So why are you people banning TikTok? Okay. There's so, a so, lot of speculation. There's a lot of speculation. Most of us think that uh, most of us who use this platform think it's because we all got together and started pushing information out that the U.S. government didn't want us pushing out. We all got together and started coming together and realizing, hey, it's too much BS going on over here, and we're all going to talk about it. All right. So the the way I the, so the thing is is what an insider had said originally from the other company or whatever that has. Uh, no. um, so what had ended up uh, happening was. Uh, <laughs> Um, the uh, other company had come forward saying that um, a, a whistleblower kind of had come forward saying that yeah. the um, there is a connection to the Chinese government. They're you they're using AI bots to read and collect as much data from U.S. citizens as possible. Now the problem is is yeah this would be a great place. To, there's so much data here. This is better than the NSA could have ever done post 11 with phone calls. But Here's the issue. The data they're collecting is useless. So you might get a couple little chunks out of it, but you're not going to get any real government data. You're not going to get anything to use against American people. You're not. Yeah. You know what? Temu or whatever might make extra money because of reading off a, of a TikTok, seeing what people want to buy. So, you know, it's more capitalism than anything. What I think the real issue is, is the U.S. government doesn't want to ban TikTok. They want. TikTok to be American owned for tax dollars coming back. Yeah, they want to make they want to have tracking. They want to know that the data is collectible through U.S. agents. Yeah, they want they want Byte Dance. They want Byte Dance to relinquish their rights to TikTok, or they're going to ban TikTok across the United States. Right, and they so, have they have from now from the time that this but the time from the time that this bill is signed. Now it still has to go through Senate. Which and they then said probably it, won't pass. And then it has to get under the president's desk. Once he signs it, they have six months. Six months. They have six so, months to prove that they're not Chinese owned. That's yeah, all. yeah. Well, so, so all these people that are freaking out that yeah, it's going to get banned. It's going to be a while. It's not going to be until sometime next year. And by next year, you know, you know who's going to be president by next year. So this is going to be a mute point.
Honestly. Uh, both of them, both pre- both people want to ban it. Biden said he would sign it. Trump said he doesn't want it. So either way, the president side, I mean, Trump, that doesn't mean anything anyway. But so, but here's two things. One, you're going to hurt American economy and you're going to make a lot of non-voting millennial down users angry. Yeah. Who are going to register to vote and take up arms. Two, have we banned Facebook or Instagram or any of the others yet? They collect data like crazy. Well, yeah, no, yeah, that's what I was going to say. They've been collecting data from out from, uh, from other places for way more, way more. Yeah. Anything I say on TikTok, I don't start seeing ads for it. I even glance at something scrolling through on Facebook for more than 1.2 seconds. My feed is filled. I'm getting mailers. I'm getting everything now. Yeah, 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 yeah. The data, the data is nuts. I get and, Amazon. And, does and, that. And, and like, if you look, if you look up something on Amazon, it pops up on Facebook. And then on Instagram, and then on yeah, Facebook. yeah, and then uh, yeah, and if, and if you're on Instagram, yeah, and it bounces back and forth. It's ridiculous. You know, so that's. You know, and then even but, I sw- pretty and then streaming apps. You know, now they're getting connected to these for their for the yeah, games yeah. and all that. So because yeah, I, I it, it's it, it's a power play saying China, you don't own us. Your companies right, are not right. going to control our kids and all this stuff. And they talk about spreading false information on TikTok. I'm sorry, we accidentally say the wrong word, we get banned on here. The AI exactly. on this is so careful. It's, and and I, if you and as soon as you say. As soon as and as soon as you're against anything, any like special group, as soon as you say anything against a certain group, you get your your video gets taken down. Well, yeah, it's very sensitive. Whereas on Instagram, you can basically show full nudity as long as you have some kind of little thing in there saying, "Oh, it's breastfeeding," or it's yeah. uh, a natural documentary, or this or that or whatever. So all of these OnlyFan girls are doing that just to get clicks. You know, yep. that's all you see now. It's annoying. And then, so you see all this crap going through. It's to the point now that you have these girls promoting bestiality on there so they can sell that. Yeah, it's the same, it's the same thing. They're doing it on Facebook, too. Yeah, right, because they're connected. So, and then threads. So, and Twitter is already wide open. I mean, Twitter's been like that, but you know Twitter's like oh, that. I won't like go that. back on Twitter. I won't go back on X. Yeah. So I won't so, go back on it. Now, here's an interesting tweet that uh, Nina Turner. Do you know who Nina Turner is? Okay. So she she was a big Bernie backer. Uh, she was a, a senator. Um, and uh, she is very progressive, but not stupid woke liberal, but like progressive liberal, you know, a little more than old school. And she put out a big thing. She said, you know, she always, she criticizes the government and Congress and how they function. And she said, you know, homeless vets in the street, um, America, uh, rent, rent out of control, um, you know, inflation, they did all these things. TikTok, really? Like, this is what we're yeah. voting on. This is what you guys yeah. are worried about for a bill right now. Why even waste your time? If it's that concerning, Biden needs to come out and say, I'm putting executive action that I'm going to ban TikTok in six months unless they prove that they are U.S. connected. End yeah. of story. Get it out of Congress. Hey, Congress, how about you go fix all the issues right now? How about you start sending a, uh, fixing our income issues? You know, and I, I get the economy actually is pretty good. Not for everybody. It is statistically better than it was several years ago. But we have a long way to go. Yeah. Just because you have an improvement doesn't mean it's fixed. And you know what? Yeah, they're taking on the border now. Great. Work on that. Don't worry about that. Yeah, no. Yeah, work on that. We there's that that oh speaking of that and just you know, a little side note speaking of the border. Did you hear about what happened in Michigan? No. Maybe. Measles. Measles outbreak. A measles yeah. outbreak in Michigan because because uh, because of 100,000 illegal immigrants that just showed up there who have not been who have not been vaccinated or 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 checked. It's spreading like wildfire. They call it the CDC. They have you so know, many I, cases of it right now. It, they call it the CDC. Did you ever have measles as a kid? Um, hold that thought. Oh, the poli- the FBI is here for Mr. J again. Everybody, he's going to be arrested. He's going back to jail. 
okay. So we'll continue the show while he's in jail. Excuse oh, me, who's going back to jail? I thought you were. I thought the FBI was there again for you. No, no, no. We're good. All, we're all, good. We're all good. your all your cars been equipment <laughs> behind you there. All those boxes. Oh, oh, that for another time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I didn't have the measles growing up as a kid. I mean, I had the fifth disease. Um, I've had the chicken pox. I never had chicken pox. You know, but I never had measles. I had rubella, which I guess is a lesser form of chicken pox or measles or something or whatever. Like if you get that, yeah, but, you don't get the other. Yeah, I, I don't, I never got rubella. Um, I got chicken pox, which means at some point in time in my older life, I'll probably get, um, shingles. My dad went through that uh, a couple several months ago, out of nowhere, and uh, you know, and that's something like a lot of people are recommending when you hit a certain age, get the uh, shingles vaccine, the Shingrix, because it's very effective with very little side effects. But what he yeah. went through for for two or three weeks with that was like, whoo, yeah. yeah, damn, sh- sh- shingles damn. sucks. Um, shingles yeah, sucks. So, yeah. I mean, it's crazy. It's like. I remember as a kid, like all these things, you pop up all the time, go get vaccination for this and all this. And now it's like, besides COVID, you don't hear about anything. Nobody yeah, talks you don't about, hear about it. Unless you go to the doctor regularly. Unless you go to the doctor regularly. Because like, cause like, you know, my son has to have vaccinations. Oh, yeah. My, my kid's saying. They get yeah. So, and time. you know, and so, but, the, you know, that's when you hear it the most. But as, you know, as time goes on, you don't hear much about it anymore. You, you might hear. hear the yeah, only during an outbreak do you hear about it, and everyone's which you know we'll probably hear, guaranteed we'll probably hear something about a measles vaccination coming out. But most, I mean, I'm most people are already vaccinated. Well, yeah, most people are already vaccinated. So, like, except the, the only vax. The only thing that I, the only thing I see is just probably all the illegal immigrants that have measles there, or the anti-vaxxers, or the kids who haven't gotten. Right. And it's not, right. And I mean, and honestly, I mean, I, to my knowledge, I'm not an expert in this, but measles isn't that serious for most of the age groups or nobody's. Yeah, no, it's months. not that serious. It's just, it spreads quickly. Yeah. But I mean, it'd be more of a concern if Ebola, if I was on the immigrant show. Yeah, we yeah. Have no, now that's, there's more of my concern. Now, time-wise, it doesn't work well because they're stuck in, it takes so long to get wherever they are. But if you had an immigrant dropped in New York city with Ebola, no what, do you, <laughs> what, what do you do? Even if you can trace it down to the back element, create the vaccine. Yeah, I know they have. Wait, yeah, you, you would. Now, you would have to shut down New York. It it would be yeah, and you'd just watch the bodies for a while until like yeah yeah come. basically basically. But well, the only positive thing now here's a question: COVID taught us how to do that very efficiently now because if all set and and not being COVID because if they call the COVID lockdown tomorrow. Most people would comply, but a lot of people would be, you know, it would be a big issue. Whereas yeah, yeah, tomorrow, yeah. If all of a sudden, though, and you know this, if all of a sudden they said um, Ebola is right next door, lockdown, I don't think you'd go out your door, would you? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go out my door. I wouldn't touch a damn thing outside no, of my no, house. No, because Ebola, <laughs> Ebola is a, We know what Ebola is, and we don't want that. And No. You know, and I would instantly go, I don't even care if it is a government conspiracy. I'm not taking a risk. I'm not. No. Ebola, no, I'm good. No one's going anywhere. We're, we're buckled down eating canned foods until this is cleared up. And it would clear up quickly. If everybody just locked down, the people that had it, would it wouldn't spread. It needs con- no. physical contact to spread. So, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I mean, or really close, I mean, more than COVID. So, I mean, that's, I, I, I mean, at that point. So, I mean, that's the question. Is, yeah, if it dumped into New York, I mean, by the time you caught it, yeah, a lot of, if it went on the subway, it would spread rampant for a while. Oh, yeah, it would but spread as soon rampant. As you ha- as soon as you lock that down and everybody would st- stay in place, including tri-state area, whatever, I mean, a few people might have planed out, but in general, I don't think – I think you could capture it enough. Oh, yeah, you definitely. Would, you, now that it was we, not like – uh, what was that movie, Dustin Hoffman, uh, Hoffman Outbreak? Outbreak. Where they're like, oh, in 16 days, the entire U.S. is going to – it's like no, – yep. it, it wouldn't spread like that. Yeah, no, that was Outbreak. That was Outbreak. But that was an awful movie. That was, was a good movie. movie. That it was, was a good movie, movie, but it was awful. Like, I mean, just that was a tearjerker for most. I, I honestly, yeah, I mean, they could have done better with it, but yeah, yeah. 
All right. I think that is the end. Well, we still got another 10 minutes. Nope, 10 what minutes. Did, get there? did you get a rose? No, nobody gave me anything. Nobody yeah. likes me. Hey, you know I got 45 hearts now? Nice. Yeah. I got 10. I, I don't know from what, but I'm like, I... People I liking your that's from that's from people liking your oh, are you talking about the the big colored orange heart thing looking there? No, not that. It's a little heart under the name. A little heart underneath your name? That's how yeah. many likes you got for your show. Oh, that's good. You know, I mean a lot of this is very new to me still and like I watch a lot of these like I watch I go into other people's lives and then just the screen is flooded with like oh, yeah. you know, stars and hearts and all this stuff and, and or whatever and, and roses. And they were talking about, they're like, this girl was like, yeah, I made 16,000 dollars last month because there of we all go. that stuff and da da da. You know, oh yeah, all the, all the yeah, sorry, scam call. You know, and I'm like, well, what, I've given a few roses out to random things because I had free ones when I signed, when I like, you know, they gave me a couple of hand out. Oh yeah, but I mean, you can I mean, buy can, more. Um, right, right. And then you whatever whatever it's a tipping system. Yeah, they yeah. But I mean, when you go when you look at the prices of some of these uh, some of these gifts, they want like three hundred and twenty five coins, twelve hundred coins. And when you look at the price of what coins are, yeah, yeah, TikTok's getting their money. So, like again, with the whole ban thing, I really don't see this going. I, I don't. I don't. I don't see TikTok going anywhere. It's making too many people, it's making too much money. However, okay, so. there is something though, speaking about TikTok, that a lot of people don't seem to understand. And I was thinking about this. Do you know why people owe money this year in taxes? No. A lot of these people that owe money in taxes they make money off of YouTube, off of, right. off of right. other social media platforms, and they're not reporting it. Right, because it's type of pay, it is free. reported. Yeah. If No, if you make a certain amount of money on these social media apps, you yeah. have to report that money. It's because it's, 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 it's not taxable income. You have to report it, just like tips. Right, right. So that's the thing. And these companies report it. Yes, but so, you yourself, you no, no, yourself. I know, I know, I get that. You, you have to too, but I'm saying the companies report it. So if you don't, the IRS will come after you. Oh yeah, yeah, but that's why the people owe this money and they don't get it. No, I know because they well, don't get it. Them, it's like, you, get, really? you get these people no. that have no cost of the business taxes or anything. Nineteen no. years old, this girl sitting there in her underwear doing her hair. These getting these roses next, you know, OnlyFans or something makes like thirty-eight thousand dollars, and then. You know, it's like, and then they owe all this taxes. Money taxes, and they're wondering, why do I owe this money? You have to report the money, <laughs> right? And and they think, well, if I don't say anything, the IRS ain't watching this. These are billion dollar corporations that report every single transaction. It's like the crypto. Unless you're in a really back end marketplace, you got to report earnings from crypto because it yeah. is all tracked. It's not pre federally registered for safety. Except for Bitcoin yeah. now by two banks, but yeah, you gotta watch this stuff. I mean, it's crazy. Um, yeah, if you're making any money at all online, you have to report it to the IRS. And the smartest thing for anybody out there from a financial standpoint, and yes, I am a financial advisor. Um, we, uh, you know, what if you're collecting any of your cash outs for crypto or stocks? Keep it in your online account until you're ready to cash it out. Because when you cash it out, then you've got to report, make sure you're reporting that fiscal, fiscal year. Yep. You sell off your whole portfolio, but you keep it in your online account with Robinhood or whoever. You're okay. It's until it comes into your possession because you still don't have it at that point. So your day trading, keeping it there, you know, these are the things you have to be careful of. And it's the same thing when it comes to you know, um, the, collecting the money from these kind of things. If you're keeping it without getting a direct payment out, you're okay until you cash it out. Yeah. But when you cash it out, be prepared. Right. Well, that's why. Figure that's one why third, I keep one. That's third. why I keep all the money that I make on here. Whatever money I make on here, I change it over to coin and I just use it. 
Right. Which I mean, you know, you made what eight point two million last year. So I mean, oh I yeah, think... sure, yeah, uh huh, yeah. Mm. Oh, if I made eight point two million, do you think I live like well, this? Well, yeah, that, that's all your uh, online buying you're doing every day. You have new boxes coming in every day, and uh, you know, I know your Louis Vuitton purse was in there, and I know you, I know, I know your flannel shirt is Gucci. We we can see it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> I, I tell you, something I want to do for work, you know, I, I look at every once in a while, and I don't know if you, you probably never see this stuff, but like Gucci will have like t-shirts that are 900 bucks, 1200 bucks for a t-shirt. And uh, Louis, Louis Vuitton has $1,800 polo shirts and stuff. And I'm like, and they, people buy this crap, you know. And I know, like, right. And I, and I get if you're going to the Met Gala, you're going to the Oscars, whatever. It doesn't matter. But yeah, yeah, I'm going to the Oscars. Let me go buy it. Let me go pay nine hundred dollars for a damn tart. Which I'm is probably the, che the cheapest dress there, or cheapest thing there, you know. But at the same time, or if you're doing a rap video or whatever, it's promotional, and you're going to make your money, whatever. I get that. But when you or you're making an appearance, but when you like, um, or but what's crazy is like, and if you're have if you're having the ultimate wedding and you want a Dolce tux, seven thousand dollars compared to a two thousand dollar. I mean, if you got the money, okay, I don't agree with it, but I get it. Now, what I want to do is go on, I've seen on eBay and I've seen on like Poshmark or a few of these other things or, you know, the secondhand things. Uh -huh. People will have these, these like Louis Vuitton or they'll have like, a, they'll have a, a Coach t-shirt or a Gucci, Gucci t-shirt. And it was originally $980 and it's $67 or something and it's in perfect condition. And it'll be like, there's a small hole in the bottom rear corner. And that's why they're getting rid of it. And I'm like, I want to buy one of these. I'll fix it myself. And then uh, I'm like, I'm going to wear it into yes. work. Yes. I'm going to wear my Gucci polo into work and be like, oh, you know, and they're usually pretty extravagant, a lot of gold and stuff. And if anybody says anything, like, yeah, it's Gucci. And just kind of blow it off. How'd you come up with that kind of money? That's what I want to kind of start doing. I want to get a little collection of this stuff and be like, well, and the thing the is, though, is, okay. Is I can go on to Amazon and I can get a shirt that looks exactly like that Gucci shirt, exactly but, to the T. That's like five hundred dollars less. But anyone who's in the fashion side of it can tell it's real or fake. They know if it's. I'm going out amongst. I'm going out amongst the dredges of Sanford, fucking Maine. I don't give a You're shit. You're gonna get mugged. You're gonna look at me thinking I'm damn rich. Wait, wait. You're I better get, not do that. You're gonna because get mugged and get your shirt You're gonna jump off. me. Right, you're gonna <laughs> get your shirt ripped. You're gonna get mugged and get your shirt ripped off, and then they're just for a fake. <laughs> and then they're gonna beat you for wearing a fake. <laughs> <laughs> good times. Good shirt. times. Good times. <laughs> hey, Jasmine. Hey, Winston. Hey, everybody joining in. Um, we uh. Yeah, they're all behind you, dude. Watch out. They're looking over your shoulder. <laughs> FBI agents are there again. Um, Fuck it. Yeah, so anyways. Well, uh, that uh, I say we call it good at that point. We've hit our hour mark. Yeah, we have. We have. We have. And, uh, you know, luckily we'll be able to see this all edited pretty soon here. And uh, I yeah, get, yeah. We'll we'll just gonna, we're just going to figure out what platform, where, where, where we're putting it. We'll get there. They all the platforms. Nobody wants us. We just have, keep hopping around. Oh, I mean, the demand is so high. We have to choose our best option. So we're we're entertaining offers. And, and our best us. option right now is TikTok. That's just... <laughs> <laughs> all our right. Most, our most functional platform seems to be t TikTok in the moment. Yeah, Instagram, yeah. That's what Instagram's most still a wonky. Yeah. You know, and I mean, I got fifteen hundred followers on here. I think you're at what twelve or thirteen hundred something. No, nah, like I got fifteen eighty. Oh, you're fifty. Wow, you're above me now. Because I shake my thing. Yeah, I know, I know. I see your forty-seven videos thing. a day pop up. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, oh, like, <laughs> I, I'm only on TikTok when we're on TikTok. <laughs> people, you know, it's funny. People, I, I work with people that are much younger than me, and like. I'll even mention something. Yeah, I got my show come. I got to do my show with it tomorrow or something or whatever. And they're like, "Oh, I don't have. To, I don't do TikTok. Uh, I'm not into that." And I'm like, "When did this become the old man's game out of nowhere? Like all of a sudden?" Well, I mean, this was this used to be this was what all of us, 
you know, all of us elder millennials jumped on back in 2020 when the, when the United States shut down. We all jumped on here. Right. It wasn't until it wasn't until the last couple of years that younger people started jumping on. Right. And now even the younger people, my, like for instance, my 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 son, he doesn't want to be on here. He doesn't want to be on TikTok. I know. What's the next thing? I don't know. As soon as we find out, we're going. We're going to be the first ones there. I heard. I, I I heard that there's another one. I think it's called Clapper. I wonder. Do you, do you just come on in? No, no, it's not like that. No, it's not like that. It's apparently and it's, it's apparently a lot like this. No, it's probably for elderly people. You clap and your lights come on. Clap on. <laughs> clap off. <laughs> clap on. Clap off. The clapper. The clapper. Yeah. See. Yeah. You know what it is and. I mean, we need that. We need Life Alert. We're, you know what? Let's create the geriatric network on here. You this, have to, we, you we have have to be 40 plus. Kit. We're going to start selling the Jab Geriatric Kit. This is no, what no, no. we need. We, we, online platform. you got to be 40 to join. <laughs> you, can, you, you, you can join and watch under 40, but you can't broadcast or load anything until you're 40 plus. That... We could do that. We could do that. You know, we'd have to find. I'd have to find an app designer to be able to do that. Yeah, uh, you know, it's like an elder network in a sense, but it's set up user friendly. Big buttons, big text. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's just when you hit start, something that's the button, the size, that says start. a freaking a freaking uh, a, a phone that's the size of a brick, so that when you hold it up and you're so damn tired, you drop it, knocks you out, and you're just like, <sighs> yeah. You know, I mean, we have elderly sleep time on there. Like, if somebody's sleeping, you can watch. I mean, you have it where people are sharing, like, their best uh, medications that they recommend for things and treatments. Um, where We can have sponsors by, like, um, a walker company and uh, the uh, commode seat rail, yeah. handrails, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, all that, that's all we need. I mean, um, you know. Uh, hush puppy slippers or something. I mean, whatever. I mean, hush puppy we, slippers. We need one of those. We need one of those four edge canes. Um, yeah, tennis uh, balls. We need bullhorn. We need a bullhorn so that we can yell at the people to get off our lawn and stop I flying just, by here at freaking fifty to sixty miles an hour. I was just gonna say you could call it. You know, you could call it uh, 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 G O M L. Gommel. Get off my lawn. We need a gommel. <laughs> it sounds horrible. It sounds like something Biden would campaign on. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no gommel. <laughs> Bring on the gommel. I, you know, I, I love Bill Maher last week and said something about Biden. He's like, uh, he's, you know, straight. Well, let's bring this up. State of the Union. We didn't talk about that. So, oh, shit. Um, yeah. So, you know, real quick. Um, you know, that, that I, was, I saw parts of it. Yeah. I mean, considering what you expect out of him. Good job. I mean, that was better than I would have ever expected. If, 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 if I remember correctly, it's the same thing he said last year and the same thing he said the year before and the same yeah, thing yeah. he said the year he but, got but, in. Right. But, it, <laughs> but, it, but yeah, but that's the State of the Union is a progress report that's useless now because of media. So it was good back in the years ago when you would get one report every, you know, whatever. And yeah, that's all the yeah. news would show. But, but here's the point of it is he came out. Hi, fire truck. Um, you came out being a uh, oh, big fire truck just went flying by my house like nice pr private development here. Um, anyway, no lights on, just drive by like, what are you doing here? So um, the uh, here's the thing though. Nope, live will end in one minute. Inactivity due to oh, hold on, I got to move the puzzle piece. They can't do this on our geriatric one because those those people are not going to figure out the puzzle piece. Um, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, we, uh, you know, he came, it was more of a test to show his stamina and him not stuttering too much or making, you know, comments that don't make sense. And, you know, he, he went back and he, he came, I don't know what they gave him before, but I was like, you know, it kind of shut him up for a little bit. And then they had that stupid response. Did you see that response from the GOP? The rebuttal? No. no. Get, when you're done with this, you need to go on and look up GOP State of the Union Address Rebuttal. It is the most cringy thing that this woman senator house rep or whatever she is from arkansas or something did they put her up there and it is like it reminds you of a recruitment video for the mormon church oh god it is her in the kitchen 
going, do we really want our children to do this? In this whole thing, and like, it is so bad that most of the Republicans came back saying, why, no, no, this isn't good. It has been so made fun of. Scarlett Johansson did mimicked it on Saturday Night Live as an opener. So <laughs> it, it, it is cringy. And it basically, and they said that it gave Biden a boost because not that he can get much because everybody's so polarized, but the little fraction of a piece that you can get from those undecideds after seeing State of the Union and seeing that was like, all right, one one side is questionable, the other side is nuts. So, you know, and it's pretty well, bad. And then, and then, like, what was it? There was a, another lady was, uh, what, they were, I, saw, I saw something about another lady who had said something about Trump. And was with Trump, and it said something. And Trump, they're like they're making fun of the whole entire thing. Her and her and Trump are making fun of the whole State of the Union address. Oh, they were going back and forth on on, on tweeting about it back and forth, yeah, left and right about every comment made. And half the comments aren't even related to anything. You don't know what they're even talking about because nothing was even said remotely connected to it. Yeah, I don't – I honestly we're, – we're screwed either way. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, and, and it's crazy watching, you know, Trump come up constantly, like, still referring to Nikki Haley as um, uh, Nancy Pelosi. I, I'm like, two rallies now is set re- reference Nancy Pelosi running against him. No, did you, you go inactive? Did I lose you? Oh, hey. Yeah. I'm still here. Were you inactive? Yeah, no. I, I had a bunch of stuff popped up all of a sudden, and then boom. I got learned more about U.S. elections popped up. So uh, yeah, that just yeah, popped up when listening. I came back on. They're listening. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah, but yeah, they're I, listening in on the conversation. But yeah, so that but you know. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, you know, you say the wrong thing. We know about Mr. E on his island the other day. You can't say the wrong thing. Um, yeah. So, uh, no, hey, hey, sh- sh- don't talk about no. The, 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 don't, don't talk about uh, Red Joe over there at all. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> I don't even want to get into the Russia thing. That should be a conversation. No, no let, um, let's not. Let's, we got to end this. <laughs> we